Now, hello everyone and welcome to Farming Through the Seasons. This is the first of the Farming Through the Seasons for this year. My name is Amy and today we're going to learn a little bit more about what happens on the farm in autumn. And then we will have some more sessions in winter, in December, and then we'll have additional sessions for spring and summer when we get to those seasons. So I see lots of people have joined and you're all very, very welcome. Let's have a little look at our participants. So if some of your teachers want to write into the Q&A box, you can let us know which schools are in attendance and we can say hello. It's possible that uh, Donal and Fiona, our farmers for today, will recognise some of the school names. Let's see who's here. I see Castleknock National School. Hello, everyone. Who else do we have? We have, oh, we have Canal Way Educate Together in Dublin 8. Very good. We have CBS Primary School in Dundalk. Hello, everybody. We have Room 4 Senior Infants in Skull Tomas. Hello. Wow, we're very busy today. This is excellent. It's great to have you all. We have fourth class from Dunboyne SPS. Hello. Oh, and we have Tyrrellstown Educate Together. We have Jerry's Senior Infants. Hi, Senior Infants. So today, today we have lots of different age groups joining us. So most of the groups who are here today are between third class and sixth class. But we do have some junior infants, some senior infants, first and second as well. So I'm going to introduce you now to our farmers. Uh, we will have a few more shout outs when we do the Q&A session at the end. But for now, I would love to introduce you to Donal and Fiona. They are from County Wicklow. So Donald and Fiona, if you want to pop on your camera and we'll be able to see you. There they are. Now, you can unmute yourselves as well, guys. So we have Donald and Fiona all the way from County Wicklow. Hello, You're very everybody. welcome. Hello, hello, everybody. Now, Donald and Fiona, if you want to um, introduce a little bit about your farm and what your farm does, and then maybe we'll get started with our video. Well, we're dairy farmers, so we milk uh, Frisian cattle. And uh, at the moment, we're milking, how many are we milking? We're milking 200. So our numbers uh, change from different times of the year, from when they are having a calf, we can't milk them then. So we're milking 200 and off you go. Yeah, so um, we, we're milking 200 cows pretty much all year round. And at the moment, we're, we are starting to calve the 80 autumn cows. And these cows will be mainly the cows that will produce the milk over the winter for basically for, for uh, liquid milk for your cartons of milk every morning there so that you'll have milk at Christmas. Because most, most dairy farmers will dry off before Christmas and start calving again in February, March. So we're one of the few farmers that calve all year round and uh, we, we keep producing milk right through Christmas. So everybody has milk and cream for their Christmas pies. So, um, so what else? Um, yeah, so we, we rear the calves. I can talk to you through it on the video, but uh, we rear the calves uh, our, and we keep mainly our Frisian uh, female calves um, for to keep for further for cows later, once they get older. So they'd be our replacements. So we, we'd rear them up to about eight weeks, eight to 10 weeks uh, on milk. And then we'd put them on dry feed for the remainder and out to grass then when the spring comes. Um, and we sell our male, male uh, Frisian male calves um, to mainly farmers or maybe some, some of them might go export. Um, and any then if we have coloured calves, which are Angus calves, would be for beef and male and females, and they would be sold to um, 
uh, farmers for, for, to keep for beef. So that's mainly the operation uh, of where we are. That's what we do. So. Brilliant, thanks for that introduction. So I'll play one of the videos now and Donal and Fiona will talk us through it. So Donal, do you want to play the milking parlor video or the other one? Yeah, the milking parlor, yeah. It would, would be, yeah, okay. So we'll have a little look at what goes on in Donal's milking parlor now. Give so this happens second. twice a day, every day. Twice a day, every day. Now let's just, here we go. Now I'm going to play it there and you'll be able to talk us through. Okay, thanks Amy. So yeah. we, are, we are, we're opening the back gate there, ready for the cows to come in. As soon as the cow sees it open, she comes flying in there um, and they get a few nuts as they come in, they get fed. A few nuts drops down in front of them and they have to walk all the way to the top before they can get it. Um, so there's 24 cows going to line up here now. And they're all Frisian. All Frisian. All Frisians. Frisian Holstein is what we call them. Um, when you see the black and white, you know they're Frisian. Isn't that it? That's it. That's it. And they're very good for milk, Frisian. Give lots of milk. And they give a, a calf very easily too. Yeah. There's never much problems with calves. So we get one calf per cow per year, is usually. For about eight years, isn't it? Uh, cow, yeah, could, uh, well, maybe more, yeah, ten, eight to 10 years, yeah, yeah. It's about the life cycle of a cow. So they all line up there so that we can put on the clusters onto their udder. And, and we close the rear gate there just to make sure no more comes in. So the udder is where the milk comes from. And I don't know, do you see the cluster? Do you show? There? Yeah, see the clusters on the left-hand side there, or on the right there now. Is it, that's where the milk, all the milk ends up in that big jar there. You can see the milk coming down from the cow there into that little glass. And um, there's an automatic cluster mover. So when the cow stops giving milk, they automatically come off themselves. And that's just uh, gives the amount, eight liters, 8.22 liters that cow gave. And um, it tells the number of the cow, that's all recorded. So I know what cows are milking and how much milk they're given. And if they're given a lot of milk, we'll give them an extra feed because uh, they need extra feed when they produce so much milk. They're interested in the video, I think, are they? <laughs> yeah. So there they are in the yard there, getting ready for coming in, lining up. So we have to keep that place nice and clean as well for the cows to prevent infection. Yeah, so it's washed twice twice a day every day after each milking washed down very thoroughly that was a lot of cows waiting to be milked there did you how many did you say over 200 was this 200 over 200 yeah over 200. yeah wow uh now donald and fiona would you like to play the other video and we can see some of the calves yeah mm -hmm. very good yeah excellent so i'll just pop that other one on there and you can do the same you can talk over it now everybody here we go So this is our calf shed or for calving and um, there's a camera in this shed uh, that I have on the phone and the, some of the lads there that work here have it as well. So they can zoom in at any time of the day to check the shed. Um, that heifer there that we were looking at, she's probably next in line now. She's getting very near calving and uh, we put them on the straw bed there. So it's they have a nice loads of room and lots of big area there to calve. So um, we moved them up to the near shed here, just under the camera, and then far away there are the ones that might be another week to two weeks, and we'll be watching them, keeping an eye on them. 
So as they get nearer, we move them up closer. So that's really the beds of the of the cows that are about to have the calf. So this is like our maternity ward. Exactly. And um, you have to keep the area where they're they're sleeping very clean because you don't want them to get sick with disease and that. So you try and keep it really clean and fresh straw every maybe two to three days. Is it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 It's very important to keep them nice and clean for to keep down infection and things like that. And the newborn calf is um, you want to make sure he doesn't pick up anything as well. So this is just uh, the area where they get the dry feed. And this is um, our calf shed. We have, we have three new calves um, and we have actually two more this morning since this was taken. And uh, this is the older calf. You can see he, he's like two days old and he's coming over to me there because he thinks I have milk for him. And uh, he's checking, checking there to see is there any milk. And um, They, they get very cute, very quick. And they have ear tags so that each of them has their own specific number. And there's an electronic device on that ear tag as well, so that you can actually just scan, uh, you can scan the tag. You don't have to read the number anymore. And these are pens all ready for the calves now, because we have 80 calves to come. So in the next three to four weeks, so we have them all ready there to, as they come there. We have nice clean beds. And this shed is already being power washed and um, cleaned over the summer because it's very important to keep infection down and uh, we have to have a very clean environment for, the, for new baby calves. So here's the other calf now checking out. What's, where's this milk? Sucking your finger. Sucking my finger there now, look. Yeah. They think they're going to get milk out of Dawn's <laughs> finger. And here's the cows. We're going in the evening now. Uh, they're coming in for evening milking. And um, you can see the lovely grass there. They're all eating there. And they're all very relaxed, lying back in the, the lovely sun. That's why Irish milk is so tasty and Irish butter and Irish cream, because uh, all of the cows in Ireland are grass fed. They, they don't have to be given anything um, inside. They're able to be outside and, and eating away the grass. And that's why Irish dairy products are so, so wanted around the world. Yeah, because it's more natural. It's more natural to eating grass all the time. So that's pretty much it now. That was brilliant guys thanks a million for sending on those videos so we could let everybody see a little bit of what's going on on the farm so we can open up the q a now so if any pupils in your classroom if you want to ask your teacher and they can submit a question into the q a box and then we'll be able to get donal and fiona to answer your questions now have a little think about any questions you might have so they have a dairy farm they have over 200 cows. They milk the cows twice a day, every day. Now there's a question here. Uh, Donal and Fiona, do you have any tractors on your farm? We do, we do. We have a Ford New Holland tractor and we have a Volvo loading shovel for feeding the cows. Um, so we have two tractors. And one, and actually we have two loaders. We have a Manitou uh, loader as well, just to keep, um, make sure if one doesn't start in the morning, we have the other. So that's pretty much it. Very important to have a tractor on, on a farm. Oh, you can get very far without it. Absolutely, absolutely. If it's not blue, it won't do. That's what we say. They're all <laughs> blue. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, how long does it take to milk 200 cows? Um, you will make 200 cows in about an hour and a half and for wash down and all it's two hours morning and then two hours again in the evening that sounds very busy yeah it's a busy busy time now what time do you milk the cows at 
The morning milking starts at six. Uh, we like starting early because uh, we like to milk early again in the evening. So we, we start looking for cows again at three o'clock in the, in the afternoon. And we're, we're hopefully finished by five, maybe half five at the latest. You have to leave a certain length of time between the first milking and the second milking. So if we started later, we wouldn't be able to milk again in the evening until later. So that's, we like to finish early. So that's why we start early. Yeah, finish early and then you can have your evenings. That's exactly, it. yeah. Oh, I lost my Q&A there for a second. Um, this is a lovely question. How many people work on your farm? Most of the time there's three of us uh, on the farm. So one person would do the start at early morning milking and the other two then would start maybe around eight o'clock. And the person doing the milking usually would, would go home for a couple of hours and come back again for the evening. So the other two then would be um, just carrying out daily duties, like um, maybe fertilizer on the farm and um, different things that needs to be done. And then weekends, maybe we do rotate a little bit if different people want days off and stuff like that, which is great. Yeah, important that everyone gets, gets a day off, gets a break. Yeah. There are different jobs as well that we can do. To, like we have three children, so they're teenagers and they like to do certain little jobs. So it wouldn't be a full time job because they're in school and they're in college, but they can go maybe get the cows and they like that job. They'll go down and get the cows and come back up on the quad with with the cows or even walk if they want or even uh, to feed the calves. They can feed the calves with the buckets and things like that. So there's little specific jobs. So we might have more people working at different times of the year. Yeah, I guess in Ireland, a lot of the time, our, our farms, they're, they're run by families. So everyone That's has it. a job to do. As long as it's an age appropriate job, then it's no problem to have everyone exactly. involved. And, and supervised. And supervised, excellent. Now let's have a little look. How do the cows make milk? Um, yeah, it's a good question to ask. Um, it's, it's just basically something natural that the cow does. Um, it will actually, it, when it eats the grass, it digests it and it, it produces milk just from the, her system, her makeup. She puts milk into the udder. And um, from eating the grass, then it's, it's just a very natural thing, cycle that she does. And don't forget as well, it, that's, that's the mother cow. So really that milk is produced to feed the calf. But because uh, she's had the calf, we can take the milk because the calf doesn't need the milk anymore. We're able to um, feed the calf on grass. So the cow is really producing the milk for the calf, but because uh, the calf doesn't need it, that's why we, we take it. So we take it then. It's, and, a, it's a mother cow. So Yeah, and some of those cows... Some cows are way better than other cows to produce milk. Some of them, and we, we do let focusing on the better cow and we, we for more milk for, for our job then to, to, to sell for putting in cartons and supplying milk. Yeah, exactly. With, your, with the breed of cow that you have, they, they produce a lot of milk, too much for one single calf. So there is some left over. There is, exactly. there is a lot a lot of milk being produced yeah so those little baby calves when they're very young they will still drink milk and um, sometimes it's from from the the milk that comes out of the machine sometimes it's milk replacer so it just depends on whatever the farmer has chosen to do uh let's see i think we have um i think there's a lot of schools from dublin here so i wonder are they are they from farming backgrounds um there's a question here from Castleknock National School. So how do you put the clusters on the cows? So I know we had a little walk through the milking parlor in the video, but do you manually put them on? So do you use your hands to put on the clusters or how does it work on your farm? We did, uh, I was on my own that day there. I, uh, if I had somebody to hold a camera, I could have showed you, but we manually lift the cluster up and there's a suction in each cluster. So once the suction goes up on and it, it catches the, the little spin, and the little teeth 
and it, it stays on then and it sucks the milk. And um, that's how that works. And it automatically comes off then um, when the cow is finished and ready. That's very helpful. Um, what age are your cows? That's a good question. I guess you have a range, right? But how how yeah. how young to how old? Okay, well, a, a calf, a cow can have a calf at two year old. So once the cow has a calf, it'll produce milk. And that cow can stay producing calves for, for, for about another um, eight, maybe eight times, six, seven times. So um, that cow could be nearly 10 years old um, uh, and could have 10, eight to 10 calves. So eight to 10 years is usually about the life of a cow. Some cows could be older, but that's roughly. So the cows you were looking at coming in there range from about two-year-old up to eight-year-old. Brilliant. We've, we're not going to get through all these questions. Everyone is, they're flying in. Um, they're really good questions. They're brilliant questions. <clears throat> Do you have any other animals on your farm? No, it's mainly cows. We just focus basically mainly on cows um, and replacement for our herd. But that's pretty much it. Our daughter uh, last year got a few oh, yeah. lambs just yeah. to rear herself. She's 14, 15 now. And uh, they were easy for her to feed and that. They were cow little lambs that... Um, the, a local farmer didn't have time to feed so she took them so we had a few sheep yeah. but then she sold them so and and we, if you want a spotter here has two donkeys my dad well. has two donkeys two so donkeys. Uh, they're on the farm too but that's all we just have them for fun do, do the donkeys have any jobs or they're just they're just pets? no they're just there no. to keep us company yeah. and we feed them some apples and that's yeah. all and a few chickens a few chickens oh yeah we have two chickens <laughs> Do you get eggs from your chickens? We do. We do. Very good. Um, do you have a bull on the farm? This, that's from, I think it's Ava, Ava or Alva. Do you have any bulls? Yeah, very good question. Um, yes, we have an Angus bull, one Angus bull at the moment. Um, and that produces our, our um, beef. So uh, any calves from him would be um, beef. Uh, Angus and they would be going to a beef farmer. Brilliant. Angus, they make they make good beef, don't they? They do. Yeah. Lovely beef. How much water do the cows drink each day? Oh, uh, a cow will drink a lot of water, especially on a fine day, hot day. They'll drink nearly double the amount they normally drink. So I would say uh, a cow could drink about 10 gallons of water a day. That's so about 100 litres. About 100 litres. About 100 litres. Yeah. Depending yeah. on if it's really warm day, it could be 125 litres. Yeah. But about 100 litres a day, e each cow would need mm -hmm. all the time. So you can imagine if we have 200 cows, 200 multiplied by 100 is a lot of water. Yeah. yeah. So you need we need to have huge big drinkers all around the field. And we have to make sure that those drinkers can't get blocked or anything happen because it's the one thing cows need all the time is water yeah. that's a really good question so they're like big swimming pools we have they're really big and they're dotted all around the fields very important it's just like ourselves as well so i think it's between two and four liters for people sorry excuse me <clears throat> two and four liters for people and the cows they drink almost a hundred so that's a lot of water mm -hmm. It was an excellent question. Really good question. How soon after being born can a calf walk? That's from Thea. Very good. Yeah, a calf can get up within about 10 minutes after being born. Some calves will get up straight away and uh, go to the mother to try and find some milk. Um, it's, a, it's pretty much amazing to watch all that. That's that, but. A calf can get up pretty much straight away after being born. Yeah. That's very different to people, isn't it? Takes about a year and a half or more for, for babies to walk. Yeah. Very helpless. 
Um, oh, this is a, a great question. This person may have a grandparent or they may live on a farm themselves. What is the name of the company that comes to take your milk? Oh, well, it's a, it's a new name. So I'd say you nearly know it's Tierlon, which was Lambia, but now it's Tierlon. Exactly. We had a little logo at the start and during one of the videos as well. So it's yeah. Tierlon. That's a great question. Great question. Hmm, I think we maybe only have time for two more questions before we wrap up, but this is a good question about safety. Have either of you ever gotten hurt from a cow? Um, not, not hurt badly, but uh, maybe, maybe a, unfortunate enough, maybe get a little kick. Maybe I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Um, or, um, but pretty much not too much because we'd be we'd be always thinking about safety in our minds so we would have very good handling facilities and we would have places to walk that we don't get hurt so we'd be always keeping that in our mind so i've never really not never have been badly hurt uh, other than maybe just um if i was maybe given medicine or something like that maybe just might have maybe she moved her head a bit fast or something but Nothing really, not, not, nothing that would hurt too much. Not, nothing bad, yeah. There's lots of safety no. measures on farms that make yeah. sure that we don't get hurt and farmers are, are well-trained and they know exactly what to do. Um, okay, we'll go for our last question now. Well, this is a lovely question because I want to hear your answer. Uh, a pupil called James wants to know if farming is a hard job. Um. I think you have to like what you're doing. And for me, I always wanted to be a farmer. I grew up on the farm and you don't become farmers just because you grow up on a farm. It's something that you want to do. And I just wanted to farm. And uh, for me, it's, it's what I love doing and I've always loved doing. So I think it's a great life. Now, sometimes it's very, very busy in the spring when we have all our baby calves coming all together. And it's a very busy time. Sometimes you might say to yourself, oh, I don't know whether I want to be a farmer today or not. But once you get past that, it's a great it's a great life. You it's know. very interesting. Yeah. And I think we, we see ourselves as not just farmers, but we're sort of looking after the land as well for everybody, for the people who are coming behind us, because that's that's really important now. And everybody's very aware that we're we have to look after the soil and the trees and the hedgerows and all of that as well. So we can't just farm the land. We have to be careful what we do and we have to uh, look after the land for the next people. Yeah, sometimes I, I feel that I'm, I'm only just minding it for the next generation. And my job really is to look out and uh, to leave it back in a better place than I actually got it. So that's my job, like, is to is to mind it and we have to make our living from it. But we also like to pass it on that the next generation will have something better again and hopefully improved along the way because that's the way it was left to me. So there's a bit of a responsibility comes with farming. That was very well said. Um, on that note, we might finish up. I think some of these kiddies might have a break time coming up. Um, so thanks a million to Fiona and Donald. It was excellent. It was lovely to see you for our autumn session. And for you all in your classrooms, we'll be back again in December with our winter farming through the season. So thanks a million for your participation and your excellent questions. And we'll see you next time. So bye-bye everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Really Great that. to Thank see you all. You. Bye now.